What's up guys? It's Kurt from Kurt's Cottage. I'm just out here in the middle of nowhere, way in the back, in nature. Haven't made a video in a long time, so let's just dive right into this one. It's an exercise bike generator, another one. This one's way better than the other ones. It doesn't use a bicycle. Obviously, this is a free find, <laughs> like everything around here. What is it made of? The exercise bike, of course. I've just converted it to run this lawnmower motor. Now this lawnmower motor was out of a 120 volt lawnmower and it's a DC motor. We can turn that really easily into a generator. It's 120 volts so that means you don't have to spin it very fast. I'm gonna light up some lights and see what this thing can do. I have a 25 watt 125 volt bulb in there. Let's see if it'll light it up. Sixty watt bulb here. Let's see what happens. This is 120 volts. I don't know if it's gonna light this one. I think it's gonna glow. Right. That was a sixty. Okay, this one's a hundred. Let's try that. Let's see what a hundred does. Don't forget it's daylight out here, so it will look a lot brighter at night. watts when this car goes by. Oh, I see it glowing already. Oh, yeah. No problem. Hardly any effort at all on that. Just have to spin it really, really fast. No one uses incandescent bulbs anymore. This is just for testing. If I put an LED in there, I'd like to see what it would do. I got a Philips uh, Slim bulb. Um, kind of weird shape, but I've had some money for a couple years. Start off slow. 60 watt. So, what I would do with this setup, I would hook up a battery um, to it so it can charge, and then I'd hook an inverter up to it. That's a better way of doing it so that you can charge the battery and then use the inverter. So it's actually an inverter generator. Uh, way better than running it direct because you get that fluctuation in brightness and voltage, and that's no good. And if you look in my previous videos, you'll see I already have one hooking it up and showing you guys who free find. And it's a mini one, so it's not it's not too high PSI or whatever. So let's pull this one apart. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, an easy one. But why is this one not working? That's the question. It's okay. Probably the switch. The best thing to do is bypass the cord and go right to the motor. And you can see this power charger is really weak. the switch. So that's an easy, easy fix. All right, let's hook it up to the, the bike. So it uses a magnetic system to uh, give you to adjust the resistance. So we have all these magnets in here. And then it, there's a flywheel and there's a piece of aluminum on there. When you adjust the tension here, the magnets come closer to this aluminum piece here on the flywheel and it slows it down, creates more tension. So how I converted it was I tried to weld a bolt onto here. I was going to put a pulley, but that was, uh, that did not work because this is cast. So then I thought, well, yeah, I'll just, I'll just put this belt on here. So this is just a alternator pulley and it was taken off of an old alternator and it was put onto the motor. A little bit of adapting. I had to put a washer in there or whatever to space it, but it, it works well. And then I just have a small serpentine belt here. I think it was off a of Toyota, I don't know. And then it just goes around the flywheel and it works really well. A lot of creaking, but don't worry about the creaking. That's It made that noise before I put the, before I put the motor on here, it already made that noise, so I don't know, whatever. All I had to do was take out these three screws here on each side, 
take off the belt and then just drop this pulley down. Also had to remove uh, the screws to, to release these magnets here. And then I just slipped the belt over and put it all back together. So it was really easy. So all I gotta do now is figure out the mounting. So that's what I'm gonna do. Workbench, old dryer, what else? So this is the tricky part, is trying to mount this. And you wanna try to line things up so that the belt doesn't slip off. And this is where I just take random stuff and I just figure out a bracket to bracket this random chunks of scrap. Piece of angle iron. All right, so I've just dry fitted this piece of angle iron on here, clamped it down, and I'm just testing the alignment. Looks pretty good. You can see it's in the middle. And what I'm gonna do now is just carefully take this off. You could bolt this down if you want. I'm gonna weld it because I, I like to do things quick. I'm just gonna take the grinder and just grind off some of this paint. I just took off some of the paint so the welder will connection. So I've thrown together this bracket and it's just two um, door latches from a car and a piece of thread rod and some nuts. So I'm gonna weld this one onto here. You could bolt it. I mean, it just it just worked out the way it did. So <laughs> I don't really care. That's how most things go around here. You want to scratch off this paint so you can weld it. And the only thing you don't want to do is breathe the paint fumes, and you don't want to fire. It's the quickest way to do it. run. That looks pretty good. So the wiring is really basic. You have just the two wires, the negative and the positive. You got to put your voltage meter on to see the polarity because you're spinning this thing uh, probably the wrong way. It depends which way you put this motor onto the uh, bracket here. If you put the motor over here, then you're spinning it the opposite way. So, you know, I just put it this way. I don't really care, it, it works. And basically I just have just a cord, it comes up to the back here, and it just goes up to this receptacle, and then you can plug things in. You can adapt some 12 volt um, cords, and then you can put a three prong on them. All right guys, that was the exercise bike generator, and thank you for watching. Peace out.